All right. So I guess we can uh, we can get started. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, oh, yeah. Did you have an initial um, connection with the Lord of the Rings and, and Tolkien source material before landing the role of Galadriel? Uh, yes. Um, I remember, um, well, my dad read The Hobbit to me, and then I remember us all gathering around the computer to watch the first trailer for the films and kind of me not understanding my parents being really excited. And then I was like 11 when the first film came out. So just like prime age to be completely blown away and obsessed. But I've also always just loved fantasy. I've kind of, um, I've often wanted to be in a magical world instead of school and things like that. So yeah, I I wasn't kind of new to the fantasy world. And in terms of playing a, a version of Galadriel that audiences have not seen on screen before, I'm wondering what was your approach like in giving a new life to such an iconic character? Um, I wanted to kind of explore, because obviously we know where she ends up and um, kind of that's been portrayed so like amazingly that kind of that felt really, it was kind of daunting, but also it was like, I know where my character ends up and I know that in the end she's happy to a degree, like she finds a degree of peace. Um, and so kind of wanted to explore like how far we could take her away from that so that she could really go on a journey. Um, and yeah, I kind of really wanted to focus on what it what it's like to be, I think we're kind of, we're in this time like grappling with history a lot. Do you know, I think kind of um, like what our responsibilities are and kind of to what about what's happened in the past. And I was really fascinated by the ideas that the elves like our living history, they can't escape that. And I think her particularly, because she comes from a family that has power and they've made mistakes and there's been a cost to that. So it's kind of what it's like to kind of carry that. And can you free yourself to a degree from self-loathing and guilt? Um, and in this season, your arc focuses a lot on your relationship with Halbrand, who is revealed to be uh, Sauron at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm wondering if you can discuss your collaboration with Charlie Vickers on the show and how you discovered uh, that you were actually sharing the screen with uh, <laughs> with Sauron. Yeah, we had suspicions um, because in our screen test, he was asked to audition with a Lucifer monologue, which we were like, hmm, I see. Um, but working with Charlie has been one of the joys of my career. Um, He's really wonderful. He's so collaborative. And I think kind of something that's been really lovely is people have really loved our chemistry. And I am i don't think that could have happened if that that came from feeling so completely safe with someone. And, you know, he's so professional and kind that it meant we could really like push things and explore things. Um, and I'm really happy kind of with what we got in the end. And I, you can't, couldn't get a nicer sound on. But then it was very exciting for me in the last episode when I saw him transform. Um, and yeah, I I, I, um, I could rave about Charlie. I could wax lyrical about him forever. Um, so one of them, actually one of the most pivotal moments of your character is when you do not reveal to uh, Elrond and Kellen Brimbor that, you know, Halbran is Sauron. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, how do you think this moment has evolved Galadriel's arc from where we saw her at the beginning of the show to to where we, we leave her at the, at the finale? Yeah, I think um, I think at the beginning of the show, um, she's in a state where her grief and pain is so massive that um, nothing else really exists, even though she's trying to kind of do things for the greater good. So she thinks um, it's her own personal pain that's dictating everything she does. So there's an there's a selfishness to that, and then I think the choices that she makes at the end of the series. Um, are more to do with her realizing that there are consequences beyond her ego and her own pain. Um, and kind of that's what we're kind of, ex oh, I get scared. And he said something season two. Um, but like, um, yeah, I kind of wanted her to, I, I, what I love about Tolkien's world is that I think there's, they're incredibly unindividualistic, his like way of looking at the world. Um, you have to be part of your community and you have to kind of be part of the planet and find joy in kind of looking at the sky or feeling the wind and she's very much not there and I'm like I think she she reaches rock bottom by the end of the season and hopefully then that means that she can regrow. And um, this season in particular puts um, Galadriel in a lot of very um, extensive and elaborate action sequences. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm wondering um, were there any challenging moments in filming something like the Sundering Seas or the Battle of Southlands? Um, 
I I can't believe that I did all of that. And like I the stunt team in New Zealand were just incredible. And I, I kind of also, I don't know about you, but I was um for lots of people in our industry didn't necessarily thrive in school. Um and I didn't adore being taught either. Um and to be taught by these people who are kind of like the best of the best. Um on any job is useful, but particularly when you're playing an immortal elf who's meant to be like strong and powerful. And yeah, so to be able to get to the point where I felt like I was really flexible and strong and able to do loads of that made me feel much closer to her. Um, something that I'm so glad they kind of had the faith in me to do it was that I ended up doing the whole of the, do we have a little sword fight in Numenor? Um, and I always thought that would be all my wonderful stunt double, Rosalie. Um, but they were like, no, we really want you to be able to do that because we think that will kind of make a big difference to how you feel as her. So kind of we started that really early on and it meant that by the end I could do all of it. And um, it makes you feel as close to an elf as you can. But I also have to shout out Alex Tarrant there um, and Anthony Crum because the kind of fainting they did to avoid my sword was just exemplary and made me look great. But it was so much fun. Um, so how extensive was the training um, process on the show? Um, whenever I wasn't filming, I was training for at least kind of three hours a day with the stunties. And then I was swimming and climbing and kind of had a personal trainer for the first time, um, which was was painful. Um, but kind of I feel it's like I feel it's um, it, it's such a privilege to be taught by people when you're wanting to be taught. Um, I feel like. My, my problems with authority figures have been healed through this, um, which was quite interesting finding that when playing Gladriel, who definitely is like, no, there will be no authority over me. Um, yeah, and so that was that was wonderful. And it was, it, I feel for climbing in particular and swimming, just in terms of feeling as close to magical as you can. When you start to feel that you're kind of in control of the water or you feel light on the wall, those are the moments where I was like, okay, this is, slightly what it might feel like to be an elf and getting like a tiny feeling of it. Awesome. It was really great talking to you today. Um, congratulations once again on the season. I cannot wait for season two. I wish you all the best on your future projects and I hope that you have a really great rest of your day. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you.